Welcome to Talking Hip CB and welcome back here to the channel guys and with Barcelona's return just around the corner now we are moving into the final days before football can finally return for us and in today's video we are going to be assessing exactly how Kike Setien may set up his team when football returns. We're going to be looking at the formations, we're going to be looking at the different systems we're going to use and all the personnel that may be involved in a truly vital end of the season for Barcelona. We need to challenge on all fronts, but to do that, we've got to get it right in terms of the tactics. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing all of our options. Let's do it. And if we do kick off, first of all, with that personnel, we have discussed it before, the depth that Barcelona will have here for that vital end of the season period that is going to be coming up, and it is going to be coming in such quick succession. Kike Setien is going to need to call upon every single avenue of his first team squad. And I think here, when you look at the depth that Barcelona have right now, we've highlighted it in previous videos. I think at centre-back, that would be there a little bit of a worry. If this starts to become injury suspension, we may well see more injuries when football returns. We're going to have to wait and see exactly how that goes. I think a fullback, I think we're doing okay. Midfield, we've got a lot of different type of options, a lot of different type of players in that area, which is very, very important because we will have different challenges to overcome. And I think in the forward areas, we do have some very, very good players. We've got a lot of talent there, and I think Braithwaite will certainly add to that. But of course, in the wider areas, in terms of natural wingers, we are still lacking there. And let's not forget, Ousmane Dembele, he cannot play until August. And even if he returns sooner, he cannot play in La Liga. But that right there, is the sort of depth here that Kike Setien will be dealing with. And I think regardless of what we've seen before under Ernesto Valverde and also what we saw there at the start of Kike Setien's reign, I think what we have to really, really hammer home here is that every single player there who's out on the starting team sheet, who's out there in the team week in, week out, they've got to earn that place. I don't think anybody here should be given a spot. I don't think anybody here should just be handed their place week in, week out. If you want to stay in the team, you've got to play well. You've got to earn that. But I think in this team right now, looking at the options we have, looking who's come back fit, looking exactly who's been in good condition over the past few weeks in training. I think that right now, when you look at this team from the get-go, I think there's three particular areas in this team that are very much up for grabs. I think there you look at right back. I think that could be there Sergio Roberto or Nelson Semedo from the start. And I think in midfield, that is a real area there where we do have a lot of options and there will be a bit of debate of exactly who gets the nod in Setien's midfield. Now, I think at right back, personally, at least right now, I would say Sergio Roberto will be the first choice to start with under Kike Setien when football returns simply because of what we've been hearing there about Semedo's transfer situation. It's been said there that he is going to leave the club when the transfer window opens this summer and for that reason you just feel as though Sergio Roberto will get the nod. You're not really going to be counting on there somebody who you envisage selling. In midfield however I don't think it's that straightforward. I think there you've certainly got Frank de Jong. He is going to be starting in that midfield in one way or another but which sort of role is he going to be in? Because of course we've seen him there under Setien and Valverde playing in that interior role. Will we see him at any stage drop back there into the deep position in midfield somewhere where he's much more comfortable where of course he played at Ajax. Are we going to see De Jong in that kind of role again? Thriving I feel in that sort of position and then of course who's going to partner him? What sort of players, what sort of dynamic are you going to have in that midfield? And you've also got to bear in mind there what's going on up front. You've got Suarez, you've got Griezmann, you've got Messi. You would expect them to be in the team but just because they're there you don't really know exactly how they're going to line up. You don't really know what sort of structure we're going to see there from that front three. And that could be vital because how that front three set up really does impact the kind of players you need in midfield. Because let me just explain here exactly what I mean by that. Because let's say, for argument's sake, that we line up here with De Jong in that holding role, his natural position. We've got Arturo Vidal here, who can give you that little bit different, that little bit of dynamism there in your midfield. And you've also got Arthur Mello, who I feel when football returns is really going to be out to prove a point. I think that that midfield has a good blend, has different type of characteristics. It's not too predictable. It's not too safe. I think there that's a very, very good midfield to have. But let me just illustrate the problem. If you start there with Griezmann, Swan, Suarez and Messi because you're not going to line up like you see it there. What we're going to see happen as we know is Lionel Messi coming to a central position and when that happens the left back there realises he doesn't have to mark Messi out wide so he's also going to defend there just that little bit more narrow. You've got Suarez here occupying the two centre backs which is good. It's going to be good there to have Suarez back as that vocal point of our attack but then you've got Antoine Griezmann. Now is he going to line up as a left winger? Are we going to see him now under Setien with Suarez back in the team? Are we going to see him play wide?
played out on the left. That is up for debate. I would say once again, we are going to see him come inside, which is fine. I would rather see Griezmann in a central role. But the problem is, you've got Messi, you've got Suarez, you've got Griezmann. Every single one of those players wants to be in a central area. And when you do that, it makes your attack then become so, so predictable. Because this is what's going to happen. They are going to defend so narrow. They're going to pack the middle of the pitch. You're going to have midfielders here swarming around Messi. You're going to have Griezmann. You're going to have Suarez crowded out. And all of that wide area there is basically going to be left unmarked. Which technically, if you use it right, that maybe wouldn't be such a bad thing. You've got all of this space here to actually make something happen. But there's two things, there's two different ways that you can approach this space out wide. Number one would be that you actually have a midfielder here in Arthur, in Vidal, who can actually go there into those areas and start actually springing up some combinations in their play. Arthur there, moving out to that space, combining there with Jordi Elba, and then you get some triangles going and that actually works quite well. But the question is right now, do we have those kind of characters in midfield, in Arthur, in Vidal, who can just move out into that space. I'm not so sure. You look in there for an Iniesta type profile play. You're looking somebody there who's going to take a chance in midfield and move there into an offensive area. And I'm just not so sure that we're possessing those exact profiles right now. And what that means is the midfield isn't really going to move out here. The midfield isn't going to help build that attack. What you're going to have is Jordi Alba on his own, the same here with Sergio Roberto, moving down that right hand side. And it's only going to be the fullbacks providing that width. And when that happens, not only do they leave a massive gap up here to counter-attack and teams who are really going to try and exploit that when using the fullbacks as width, but you're also going to make that very predictable too. Because you know that defender's got in their mind there, they're going to let Alba have the ball, they're going to let Roberto have the ball, because the only option they have is a cross into the area. And many, many defences will say, you know what? We will let Barcelona cross the ball. We're going to let them put the ball in there because that is much less dangerous than Messi having it here, than Griezmann having it here. They will let you have the ball out wide and quite often we can't do enough in those areas. But let me just illustrate there exactly how that sort of situation would change if you have a natural wide player taking up here the space that's going to be left behind by those coming inside. Because Messi is always here, going to come inside, he's going to drop central. Now you may have Suarez here, you may have Griezmann, whoever you choose to go with there as your central striker. But just add Ansu Fati here as natural width. Somebody there who's going to hold his width, basically, so this defender here, this fullback, can't go there. If he goes there, Ansu is in an abundance of space. So what happens is, you have your full back out wide, then you have a different threat because then you've got Alba on the overlap and suddenly then this guy cannot be outnumbered. So he's going to have to have a man over to help him out. In the overlap there situation, you're going to need two defenders here to come across and actually shield the danger. What that does now is allow Arthur Mello, is allow players here in midfield to start getting involved. And suddenly then you start opening space up in midfield because often guys playing a wide play here, it's not all about what happens in this wider area. It's not just about here, one versus ones, getting to the byline there, creating chances, scoring goals. It's not just about what they do on the ball, it's also about what they do off the ball. The way here, they can keep their width, hold that width, and create all of that space in a central area for the players there, like Messi, like Arthur, like Vidal, who need that room and can thrive in that space. Ansu, a natural wide player, can help open that space up. However, 4-3-3 is not the only formation that you can use. We can be flexible. We can change our formation here to suit the players that we have. Because, right, you've got Messi here coming central. You've got Suarez there leading the line. Now, if you don't want to play Griezmann as a winger, why not play in there as an outright forward with Suarez and Griezmann playing there as centre forwards and Messi here almost as an attacking midfielder. Then you've got Busquets, you've got Arthur, you've got De Jong, a midfield like that who's happy there to keep the ball, play it into Messi, and these two will certainly get chances. But once again, Again, that width, it's not there. You are going to struggle there to depend on your fullbacks there to give you any genuine width. So let me just propose here a different alternative. Could we, under Kike Setien, actually see something that he did at Betis? He did play there with a back three. You've got Pique, you've got Umtiti, and you've got Clement Longley. And I also wouldn't rule out if Umtiti isn't fit, if you don't want to play Araujo, could this work as a back three? Longley, Pique, and Semedo as that right centre-back. You've seen it happen at many of the big clubs. David Alaba playing centre-back, full-backs there who are actually changing their style now to play at centre-back. It can work. But let's just say here that Setien lines up 
with that back three. You've got De Jong, you've got Arthur in midfield there to control the game. You can put Busquets in there, you can do anything you like there, you can change things about whatever you want to do. But the difference now is those fullbacks don't have as much defensive responsibility. So now they can almost act as wingers. Roberto, as we know, can join in the midfield. He does like to do that. He does like to play in this sort of area. And Jordi Alba can get up and down there all day long. Now, I would be much more comfortable with the fullbacks providing the width as long as we have three nice centre-backs here to cover for them in behind. You've got the athleticism there of Frankie de Jong to get back in. You've got Arthur Mello as well. And I think there, that is much more balanced in the attacking area with Messi, Griezmann and Suarez. And those fullbacks there with much less defensive responsibility. That, for me, does look like an option. I'm not saying that we can use it in every single game, but I wouldn't be against Setien here trying a back three. And just finally, guys, I know this formation in particular is a favourite among many of you. The 4-2-3-1 formation in game. You can see Messi again coming central. Suarez there playing as the leading man. Griezmann technically from the left, but Ansu Fati now from the right. What you're doing there is you're packing the field with attacking players. You don't really have the fullbacks need to go forward too much. If Griezmann goes in there, Alba can go down. But this time, you don't need anybody to go down the right-hand side. So I think there you can play Semedo, who is a more defensively solid fullback. Somebody maybe who doesn't want to go forward as much, but when you've got a natural winger ahead of him, you don't really have to know. In the Champions League, of course, you could swap out Ansu and put in Ousmane Dembele. If he's fit for that game, that could work too. But I just think here, this also is an option. Again, I'm not saying every game, I'm not saying it's the absolute top teams you're going to be able to use this many attacking players. But I think certainly against your mid-table opposition in La Liga, home games where you're very comfortable, dominating possession, let's get attacking players out there. You've got Suarez as your vocal point. You've got the width, you've got the pace, there with Ansu Fati, but then you've got Griezmann who can start in that role but move inside as well to support Suarez and again it's another option there using what you've got using the players that you have to make an impact. And I just think in general, guys, it's those two specific areas of the pitch that I really want to know what are your thoughts because we have so many different alternatives there in midfield. You've got Arthur, you've got Dion, you've got Busquets. Would you add there in Arturo Vidal? Would you add in Ivan Rakitic? Would you play there with a more experienced centre midfield perhaps? So you've got a number of options there, as you can see, that Kike Setien has at his disposal. And you basically got to get players in that midfield there that suit the way that we're playing. If you've got players ahead of you there who can move, who can keep their width, you want players who can have more control. If you've got players Players there who are going to come central, you need maybe more dynamic players who are going to move into the open space. And then, of course, up front, I haven't even mentioned here Martin Braithwaite, somebody for me who can have a massive, massive impact on this team, as we've spoken about before. Somebody there who can play out wide. He'll happily keep his discipline there if he's being asked to play as a winger, but he can also play there directly down the middle. And again, you can see so many different options there in the center of the field, whether you've got Ansu, whether you've got Griezmann, Messi, Suarez, Braithwaite. There are so so many different alternatives in this team for Setien to choose from. And let's not forget either, it doesn't always have to be from the start. I think Braithwaite is certainly somebody who's going to be used time and time again, off the bench there, coming on for an impact. We've got five subs in total now. There is so much to look out for and so much to choose from here. Setien does have options and for a coach. That is never a bad thing. So with all of that information, guys, taken into account, all of that processing right now through your mind, like I say, there is so much to focus on here. There is so much to discuss. And certainly in the coming days, we're going to be talking a lot more specifically about the Mallorca game, the kind of team that Setien could line up with. We do have a suspension. We do have a few concerns ahead of that game. I'm going to be talking about that in a bit of detail prior to that match. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. What formation would you like to see from Barcelona? Who would you like to see in that midfield? And most importantly, how would you structure that attack? I can't wait to see what you've got to say. But until next time, thanks as always, guys. Vizca, El Barça. Oh, 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 oh.